So let's hear God's word. We're uh, continuing in the Gospel of John and we're looking at these Gospel messages. Uh, and particularly now we're coming to see uh, this portion dealing on the Lamb of God. So let's uh, read together then from verse 29 of John chapter 1. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So let's pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for your precious word. And we ask, O oh Lord, your hand upon us as we think upon it together. We pray that the blessed Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth, will help us to understand something afresh from this, uh, perhaps a, quite a, a passage that's very familiar to many of us. And we pray, Lord, that you will guide us, that you will teach us, and that you will prepare us, because we know, Lord Jesus, that you came with a very special message. And there was a forerunner who came to prepare the way. And in many ways, Lord, we are like that. We are forerunners. We are preparing the way for Jesus, to for people to come and to put their faith and trust in him. Forgive us, Lord, where we fail. Forgive me, Lord, too, where I fail and weak. And... Forgive us, Lord, where we are not the uh, witness and the testimony and the, uh, the, you know, the way we should act. And help us, Lord, to live more for you and for your glory. We ask that in these days people may truly realize their need of salvation and come to put their faith and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we ask your blessing now, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. 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 And that's the second of the reading. We did that. You had a funnel in your Bibles. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, so we're going to look at this portion of God's Word. Uh, John chapter 1, 29 to 31. And uh, uh, we have looked at it before, but in this case... We're going to look at, under a different uh, uh, heading, a life-changing introduction. A life-changing introduction. And that is amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? Uh, that we can have a life-changing introduction. Hey. I thought I had a little note, a little something here. But anyway... Uh, this is important, you see, to have this, uh, you know, that we're introduced to someone. We're introduced to the right person. And it's amazing, you know. Uh, I was just thinking of one story of this bride. This bride was a bit nervous on her wedding day. And she, uh, you know, she had been introduced to a very important person in her life. And now she was going to make that, uh, uh, you know, meeting together, that uh, promise they had made to one another, to make it legal and to have God's blessing. But she was very nervous and she didn't know what to do and she got so handsome and told her, now don't worry, the best thing you can do is you just think about, you know, that you're walking up the aisle and then, you know, after they add that, you see, there's uh, the, the front, you know, where we have a table, 
uh, they, they would call it the, the altar. But since Jesus, of course, died on the cross, we don't need an altar. Because he is the altar and he is the sacrifice. And anyway, in the story, there was the aisle. And then think about the altar, at the, you know, think about the front of the church. And then there's him, you know. The most important person of all you see there at the front. You know. So, uh, a little later she was, uh, someone heard her saying, you know, she was repeating some words, you see, to try and focus her attention uh, and to not do away with the nerves. And so, she was heard to say, under her breath, you know, kind of ways, I'll alter him. <laughs> <laughs> so you got that, did you? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, that's oftentimes what happens, you see, mm -hmm. when we come to, uh, uh, to know someone and experience that close relationship, how much we can be altered, you know, and changed. Uh, and uh, there it is. So, uh, this is a, a life-changing introduction and is introduced to a very important person that, of course, will change your life. It's life-changing. It's, it's really, when we think about this, it's a life-changing sacrifice. A life-changing sacrifice, say. Eh? And I wonder what this sacrifice will do. And what do you think about that? Of course, the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's pointing to a life-changing sacrifice. Because Jesus was going to die on the cross. The Lamb of God. It said in Revelation, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so it's important, isn't it, to think about that. That he gave his life for you and for me. That he died to save us. To pay, to take the punishment that we deserve. Oh, such a spotless, such a perfect, the sinless Lord Jesus Christ. Giving himself so freely. What love! What, in, what a person to be introduced to. That's what we're all about, isn't it? Introducing people to the Lord Jesus Christ for this life-changing uh, situation that will be amazing. Oh, it's so wonderful for them. So it's, you know, it's a life-changing sacrifice. But why sacrifice again, we think? <coughs> why the sacrifice? We might think we make sacrifices every day. But there's nothing like the sacrifice the Lord Jesus Christ made. And well, there were sacrifices in the Old Testament. And the reason, of course, we have the sacrifices is that we lost the relationship with God. The early Israel, they had the altar and the sacrifices. And it was because we lost the relationship. And God was showing a way in now. And, and every lamb and every animal that was killed and sa sacrificed was pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin, but it was the Lord Jesus Christ's death on the cross who could take away sin and finish that uh, sacrificial system forever. And the once offering of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary. He is... The altar, as we reminded of, and he is the sacrifice, the victim on the altar. <coughs> it's hard to understand that, 
But that's the kind of picture and the typology of it, you know. And so, uh, a man coming up to Jerusalem, to the temple, would need a lamb. He'd have, if he didn't have a lamb, he'd have to buy a lamb. Perfect little lamb, you know. For to do that. That's what the way a Jew would, would have to do it. And, of course, it would remind them that he was a sinner. And it was because of his sin that this perfect, innocent little lamb had to die. And he would lay his hands and confess his sin upon the head of that animal. You know. That's the way it was, you see. But it wasn't enough to take away sin. It was pointing to the one who would do it. We don't see that. Because the Bible is progressive revelation, it's pointing to the one sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary. And of course, they would bring the, the lamb, would be placed on the altar, and there it would be sacrificed. And uh, there atonement would be made, and they would confess their sins. Right. So it is very important. And of course, when John saw the Lord Jesus Christ coming, John the Baptist saw the Lord Jesus Christ coming, he saw the fulfillment of the Passover lamb and all the other lambs and animals that were killed. You know, the blood of the lamb protected the whole nation of Israel. The blood of the lamb will protect every person trusting in him in this world is trusting their faith and trust in him. If you say, no, kind of ridiculous that, but then that's it. And uh, God is, uh, you know, shows us the way and he's not a dictator. He's not a Pol Pot or a, a, a mean or he's not a whatever else, you know. He, he's he's uh, one who comes and speaks so wonderfully, so willingly, so graciously. But you know, he laid down his life for us. And, God, uh, and it says in the Bible, God the Father laid on him the iniquity of us all. All our sin was laid upon him. So it's a life-changing introduction. But how, you might ask, how is it a life-changing introduction? Well, it's because of the life-changing sacrifice. You see, people can think, well, I'll say a prayer, I'll ask Jesus into my life. But that's not enough. We have to really, it's the turning, it's the change of a lifetime. We have to truly commit our lives into his hand. We have to truly turn to him in repentance and faith and say, Lord Jesus, I should be there. It, you should be there, not me. Not, not, sorry, not you. But I should be on that cross. But you know, we were in effect. Because you know, our sins were there. And he's taken it for us, our punishment. And in a sense, we are there. We're on his mind that we are there. And, and he's done it for us. And the punishment is paid in full for us. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. How amazing. How can I do that? How can the Lamb of God do such a thing? One, because he is God. He is God's Son. And one, he is the perfect sacrifice. And it's also God's way. There's no point in saying, God, oh, you should have planned another way. Why did you have do that? No point in saying that. That is the way it's done. We have to trust in him and accept the terms, the plan, and, and the payment. That, why was it? Because mm. sin was so serious. And sin has infiltrated this whole world. And there it is. But he's so wonderful that there is a way out for us, you know. Mm. 
Well, you see, there were the animal sacrifices. They were, weren't in themselves able to take away sin. They were just pointers and pictures to the one who was going to come. And sin is going to be there uh, until the end. And of course, God's Son laid down his life for us. Laid it down freely on that cross. He could have walked away, you know. But he says, suffer it to be now. Let it be now. Mm. One day he said to John the Baptist, suffer it to be now. Let it be now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And of course, he was fulfilling righteousness on the cross. And of course, he was pictured of this, you know, dying to the old life and rising to the new life. Well, you see, it's a life-changing sacrifice, isn't it? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And of course, it's for all people in the world, for all who will put their faith and trust in him. Not for some people, not for Jews, not for the Irish, but for, not just for the Indians, but for all kinds of people. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin, he can deal with the sin problem. But you know, the world doesn't want you usually him to deal with it. They say, ah, oh, well, I'll do a few good things myself. I'll, I'll manage a bit, you know, but that, of course, is not good enough. You know, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, how is he going to do that? Well, he started, he made the first great blow, and he defeated Satan on the cross. And so, there, you know, Satan's was crushed. In the crushing of Satan, he was wounded. The, the, the Son of God was wounded. But there was the start. My friends, he's coming a second time to finish the job and eradicate sin. In the meantime, the way is open, you see, because he could have finished it at sometime after Calvary. Sometime after he was crucified. But he didn't do that. Why? Because in the mercy of God and his plan, there's you and I. And the way is open for different people to come to faith in Christ. If he had to close the door, it'd be too late. For some. So the way is opened and people, it's still for people to come to put their faith and trust in him. In the meantime, while the, the way is open, while the door of grace is open, while the, the door is open for us to repent and to put our faith in Christ. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the opening. Right? And so, it's a life changing introduction you know mankind has forfeited our sovereignty in the terrible not terrible that's what happened mankind has forfeited our sovereignty to the devil and the devil is the one who's running this world you can see him acting in all places in different ways you know, our country has given over its sovereignty to Europe. We're no more Irish now, we're Europeans. And of course, eh, but the whole thing is, the important fact is that we, it's our sovereign Lord Jesus Christ. It's our King. And when we, we don't have to worry about the uh, Europe, but we, by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, are come into a, a new kingdom, a new empire, under new leadership. And so, it's a life-changing surrender. Right? It's a life-changing surrender 
we have to surrender to the claims of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it was a life-changing sacrifice for us. Oh, if he hadn't mm. died, well, we mm. would have been lost. There'd be no point mm. in going on. But it's also a life-changing surrender. We have to surrender to the crown rights of King Jesus. Right? Here is John the Baptist, the woolly, hairy, with the camel's hair and, and mm. all that funny man dressed, long hair and that sort of thing. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. And that's a great statement, isn't it? Here is the person who is more preferred than anybody else. More preferred than your wife or your husband. He's the number one person and should get your number one vote. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man. This is the real man. This is the person. This is the one to trust in. Yes, he was before John the Baptist because he was there before time began. He was there with the Father in heaven before creation. He says, for he was before me. I hope that you do prefer him above anything else. We do need him. So Christ calls us to surrender our life to him. Isn't that amazing? That's so important, isn't it? I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. That was the reason to show. I did not know him. Isn't that amazing? You need to know Jesus, don't you? You need to know him as your Lord and Saviour. You need to know who he is and what he came to do. Do you think you would, uh, you know, get married to a man you never met and you didn't know nothing about if you come to live with that person? Sure, I'm sure not. You need then to know Jesus. And Jesus is seeking a bride for himself, of course. And Jesus is calling people out. It's a spiritual bride. There's no funny stuff about it, remember. You know the, the, the words? Will you take this man as your wedded husband? To have and to hold from this day forth and forevermore. You know, only for him. Will you trust your life to Jesus? Will you trust your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? That's what's, in, what's, what's entailed there. That's what it is. Will you surrender your old family, your old ties, that which you went on in, in this world, Will God's family be your family? Isn't that amazing? Will God's family be your family? Because it's not what you're leaving, it's what you're getting into. It's the family of God. It's the people of God. I know it says we are a peculiar people, a, 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 a nation, but belonging to God. We are God's household, God's family. All these uh, all these ways it's spoken of in the Bible. And so, that's the great challenge. Remember Ruth in the Old Testament? Ruth was challenged by Naomi, her mother-in-law. And uh, off uh, she went back to her own people. But well, what did Ruth say? Entreat me not to leave you, or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, 
I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. And you know, if Ruth was here today, if Ruth had been there in, in, in Jesus' day, she would have loved and embraced the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, to follow him and to be her saviour. But that's how she put it there. And that's how some people come together in marriage too as well. And what is the great coming together with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because one day Jesus is coming to call his bride, the coming to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And of course, as we are now preparing, the bride makes herself ready. And so we answer to the challenge, will we surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ? And then, of course, you see, you know, it's, it's not just a life-changing sacrifice uh, mm. and uh, mm. a life-changing surrender to him, but it's a life-changing satisfaction. Oh, boy, what's the matter? We haven't seen anything yet. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And he remained upon him, and I did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. What amazing words. And you know there's a lot in that, more than maybe we can look at tonight. But it's very important. Because it's pointing to this life-changing satisfaction. And you know, this need this what's happened here needs to be spiritually <laughs> revealed. It's revelation. It has to be revealed to us. John the Baptist said, see he never met Jesus, interesting, personally as far as we know. He was away preparing him. Now Jesus was, was, was a kind of hidden, and then uh, silent years in Nazareth. So John says, I did not know him. So, it was revealed to him. And how was this going to be revealed to him? But it had to be God the Father. It had to be God showing him. He was told, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And so the church can baptize people with water, whatever is a big amount or a little amount. But Jesus never baptized. He owned his baptism was the Holy Spirit. When you put your faith and trust in him and he gives you the Holy Spirit to empower you for witness and for service and for many things in life to understand God's word it's a life-changing satisfaction. And of course <clears throat> mentioned the dove, didn't it? In other places it mentions too. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove. Why a dove? Well again, a bit like a lamb, isn't it too? A dove is usually white, pure white. And is pure, it speaks of purity. The symbolism is of purity and things like that, you know. And so... 
and gentle as a dove. All those qualities of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know. So it's, it's symbolism there. That's why they use a dove. Like a dove. Not a dove, but like a dove. Upon him. And a voice came from heaven. That amazing. The, there was three there in the river Jordan witnessed this great event. And he witnesses every event of baptism. They're all there at each time. They all come to that particular occasion. It's very important. It's the most important step, you see. Mm. They were there for the baptism of God's Son. And the voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son. Now wonderful, he said. Beloved. God the Father loved his Son. Loved him even when he was on the cross. Even when he couldn't look at, at his son in those three hours of darkness. Mm -hmm. But he still loved him. You are my beloved son. And you, I am well pleased. How pleased he was. He was pleased because he was one that was going to reverse the enemy's attack on the world. He was going to defeat the Satan head on. My friend, he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever. There'll be no more sin or sickness or any of those things. No more pills. Nothing like that needed. All because you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. He was so happy that his beloved son was going to reverse all the tragedies and all the problems and all that Satan had poured in upon this world. Yeah. But he came to save you and me. And of course, mm. the symbol a reminder of the dove, of course, is the Holy Spirit is gentle, easily grieved. And that's the, you know, pure and sinless many other things and so we come then to another the life changing satisfaction sorry a little problem here you see we looked already that it has to be revealed it had to be revealed to John the Baptist and it has to be revealed to each one of us but also it needs to be spiritually Related. Related. He has to, it had to be related to him. You know, he had, God the Father related this to John the Baptist, personally. Yes, personally he was prepared. It was part of his preparation. It was part of his time in the wilderness. It was part of that getting ready for his ministry. Personally, he was told. Yes, there's one important event, John. It's going to happen. You have to do this. You have to baptize my son. And you will know it when you see this sign, the Holy Spirit coming down. And so, yes, it was great personally to John, wasn't it? But it was publicly, I don't know how, whether the people grasped it or not, but publicly it's there too. It's for us. Just as much for John the Baptist as for his church and for his people. A public demonstration there <coughs> of this person who was coming. We don't know how many saw it, but we have it where? Well. It doesn't matter. How many saw it? We have it in the Word of God. We have it in their Bibles, don't we? It's there for us. God the Father related this to John the Baptist personally, and then it was publicly as well to people. Publicly has brought light down to us today. And why is it? Well, it's to satisfy our curious minds. We'd be Curious about things, aren't we? 
Don't you get curious about things? Wonder about things? Question things? Wonder why is this? So as to clarify, to satisfy. So as that we'll, we'll have no doubts. There'll be no worries. Could it be a hoax? Is it right? No. It's authenticated. It's real. And of course, mm. this needs to be specially retold. It needs to be specially retold, doesn't it? Mm. It needs to be, well, oh no, <coughs> you know, this uh, here, my Christianity, you know, it is so personal to me that I don't want to talk about anybody else. Why do you come and talk about it? Well, it's because Jesus came. It's we go out with the message because Jesus came with this important message. It has to be retold. We are telling it tonight. We are thinking of it tonight. And so, because it's the life-changing satisfaction. It's to satisfy you. God's justice was satisfied. But then people have to be satisfied that this is true and this is real. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. What wonderful words for you and for me. What amazing words. This is not a pie in the sky. This is not on cloud nine. We're down to that. This is real. This is, test he's testifying that this is none other than the Son of God. How wonderful, isn't it? And that, of course, should give us great satisfaction, shouldn't it? Friends, this is the evangel. It's the good news of the gospel. But where do we get the name of our church? It's not going to come. Oh yeah, the name comes from that evangelical. And if you want to know more about evangelical, you read it in the in the dictionary speaks very loudly and profoundly about what it means. It's that all talking about the good news and the message they go out to bring. The life-changing message of the gospel. There were gospelers and babbled the gospel. And so it came from the Greek evangel. Alright? So it's a life-changing message. And of course, it's uh, a life changing sacrifice and a life changing surrender and a life changing satisfaction. You can be satisfied, truly satisfied, with God's way, God's message. You can be totally satisfied. Because he, you know, one day, he will return. Every eye shall see him. <laughs> and all those things that he has planned will be brought <coughs> to head, fruition. <coughs> and he, and he will finish the work that he came to do. The final, he said, when he came first, he mm. said, I'm not come to judge the world. I come to save. And he came mm. to seek and to save that which was lost. And so there he is. But then, second time, yes, he will come to judge. And then is the time we need to be trusting in him. We have repented of our sins. And God says he buries our sins in the depths of the sea, never to remember them. We, of course, will get rewards. But we need to be trusting in him. When he says, what have you done with my son? Have you believed in him? Have you trusted in him? Do you believe he was the Lamb of God coming to take away the sin of the world? 
so wonderful, isn't it, that he was the fulfilment of those lands and that he's our great saviour who came to redeem us. So let's pray. Mm -hmm. Our gracious God, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you for the message of the gospel. We thank you for being our saviour, for being the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. So we ask now that you will go with us and guide us. Help us in all our discussions and our thinking and living in this life. And we pray you will guide us with the wonderful gospel message. We pray you will help us to be able to bring it to people, whether they will accept it or not. But we do pray, Lord, that many will truly come to a personal faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Know that life-changing message and hope and the satisfaction that there is in knowing you. We pray now in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.